In this video, I'll cover creating a kitchen island elevation, dimensioning the island, and adjusting how the camera displays in the floor plan view. A wall elevation will be isolated to the room it's drawn in and hide the wall, ceiling, and floor platforms. It's a good camera to use for interior elevations. Let's begin with the elevation by using the wall elevation tool. I'll left click and drag through the island and then release the mouse. In the wall elevation camera, let's go through and edit the active view. You'll find this tool in the upper toolbar with a little pencil called Edit Active View. On the first panel for camera, I like to give good descriptive names to these cameras. So I'm going to give this the island elevation and we'll call it the front. In the view that's up behind the dialog, you can see behind the island such as the window in the wall. I want to mask that. I'm going to use the option underneath scene clipping called back clip. This will back clip it the amount you drew. You can also type in a value for the back clipping to be very specific. On the plan display, as long as I'm in here, I'm going to change the callout label that will show up in the floor plan to K3. Now that the back clipping has masked the back wall, you may want to use the line tool and draw a ceiling line. And I'm just going to come in here and snap on top of the cabinet and draw a line to show and represent the ceiling. The next step is to dimension the island. Now note, I am using the kitchen and bath defaults. You can verify this under Edit Active View under your selected defaults. And if you're following along in the video, I am using the dimensions for kitchen and bath dimensions. First tool that I'm going to use underneath the dimensions is the end to end dimension tool. I'm going to come in and from one end of the island to the other, I'm going to go ahead and click and drag the dimension line. I'll pull it down approximately where I want. You can always zoom in. You see the diamond at the end of the cabinet. You can move that if you want to adjust it onto the end of the countertop. Now for the next set of dimension, I'm going to use the ruler. If I click and drag through the island, it may pick up quite a few things depending on where you drew the dimension line. If I draw it down a little bit lower, it may not pick up the sink and it may do a pretty good job. If you find the dimensions aren't picking up what you want or are picking up too many points, you can go into the Edit Active View and then modify the dimensions using the little pencil tool here. I'm using the manual dimension, so I'm going to click on locate manual dimension. And you can control exactly what this dimension is going to pick up. You can see that for my cabinets, it's picking up the sides, the corners, the molding, and the countertop. If you want to restrict the dimensioning, you can go in and add or subtract what the dimensions will pick up. Let's take a look at doing the dimension for the center line. Underneath the locate center line, you can see that for the fixtures, the only thing that is selected is for the centers. None of the cabinet items have been enabled. As I switch my tool to the centerline dimension tool, with the centerline tool, I'll click and drag. It will pick up a couple of the items for the centerline. I'll go ahead and pull this down and make modifications. Let's begin by pulling down the dimensions for the box. I'll make room for the centerline. We'll pull the centerline dimension down. Use the extra diamond where you click, you'll find an extra diamond. I'm going to pull it onto the edge of the waterfall countertop. You'll see the extra diamond wherever you click. I'll go ahead and pull that on to the end of the cabinet run. I now have the center line dimensioned for both the sink and the dishwasher. To dimension vertically, go ahead and use the dimension tool. I'll go ahead and click and drag down through. Zoom in, you can see that it's picked up the shoe molding. Tap on the dimension, I'll pull the dimension marker off the shoe, zoom back out, and you can see that I now have the vertical dimensions positioned. If you want to add an additional dimension line, let's say to the electrical, it will want to snap to the center of the fixture. A lot of times what I'll do is draw a line, toggle on my crosshair so you can see this, and I'll just come in here and I'll draw a small line approximately where the bottom of the fixture is, tap on the dimension, pull the diamond from the center of the fixture down to the bottom of the light. You now have your dimension. You can click on the edge of it, pull that out so that it moves. And then when you want to move both fixtures, if you pull them down, you'll need to move both the line and the fixture when you make that adjustment. 
Let's move back over into the floor plan view. You see the camera that was created. It's a duplicate of the previous one that I had in the current sample plan. It is whited out because the camera is currently open. If you close the camera view, they will then look exactly the same and you see the fill return onto the camera. Let's take a look at adjusting the camera call out in the floor plan view. First, I want to send the view out to the layout and discuss how it may affect your call out in the floor plan view. Let me go ahead and open up an existing layout. On this layout page, I'm going to send the view in the middle bottom of the layout sheet. So I'll return back into the floor plan view, activate the camera by double clicking on it, and then underneath the file menu, I'll come down and send to layout. I'm going to go ahead and use plot lines, color fill. You see the scaling at a half inch. I'm going to change that down to a quarter inch and send it out to the layout sheet. Go ahead and pull the view down. Now I'm going to go ahead and return back into the floor plan view. You can see underneath the call out, the page number from the layout sheet we sent it to, page 4, is now filled in. Underneath of the camera, you can either double click and open it up. You can also use the open button in the far left hand corner. On the camera itself, on plan display, if you have the text below the line set to be automatic, when you send the view out to the layout sheet, it will fill in the page number. You can turn that off. You can type in any text you want below the line. You can also zero it out and remove the text below the line. The camera size can be changed as well. If you open up the active layer display set options, camera is currently selected. You'll see that it's highlighted over here. You'll see the text style that it's set to. In this case, in this example, it's set to the default text style. Many times it is set to a half inch and when you zoom in and you look at the camera size as we take a look at this you'll see how small it becomes you can tap on the camera change it to a different size maybe quarter inch and adjust the camera size based on your style preferences you can also control the display of the camera itself tap on the camera open it up and on the plan display you'll see that the call out size is set specifically to a number. In this case it's 14. If you set it to be automatic it will resize based on the size of the text and the layer you're using. So if I switch this back to a half inch you can see that the camera resized about it and the other cameras are still using a fixed amount being 14. By setting it to be automatic it will grow based on the size of the layer textile that you're using. One final thing with the cameras you can either double click on them to open them up. You can open them up from the layout by double clicking on the view. And you can also access them from the project browser. You'll find these underneath your cross section cameras and specifically you can come down double click to open up any of the views. That wraps up this video on Kitchen Island elevations, dimensioning, and adjusting how the camera displays in the floor plan view. To learn more, please see our other videos and our built-in help file. Thanks for watching.